Uh, good morning, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to Fred's shop. Uh, Fred's in the background over there. Uh, and this is a continuation of uh, the lipstick on, on Fred's uh, slide. So um, we'll, we'll just pan in over there. Um, have a look. Morning Fred. Morning Bruce. Good uh, to see you this early. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is uh, Fred's pride and joy, the DSG, which uh, helped him uh, uh, get sorted out here, and it's um, it certainly made a big difference to Fred. Um, I'll just come around there now. Um, Fred's life has changed dramatically since he's had this. Um, so what we've got is the uh, the cross line area here where uh, Fred was uh, struggling. Um, with the, with the binding up, and we've found we'll come and do a close up shortly. Um, but uh, anyway, so we take we took the the top off, we took the cross slide off, we brought it into the um, to my workshop. I've uh, machined it up. Uh, let's just uh, pan that out a bit. Go back out again. Yeah. So we we. Um, I machined it as I showed in the in the previous uh, uh, movie. Uh, took out the centre as well, which is beyond the, that first movie. And, um, and to get into the edges of the dovetail, my uh, uh, Randy Richards' dovetail was just not quite big enough to get right in. So uh, Fred set it up on his little um, uh, his, his little shaper and made up a tool. And we'll come around here, and, and Fred can show us how what he's got, how he's gone about doing that. So, if you want to come over here, Fred. Um, so, I'll come down a bit. Uh, that's 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 Fred's little shaper. What, what is it, Fred? It's, it's a, a small yeah. Douglas. It's a small Douglas. Douglas shaper. Yeah. Yeah. Out of here, ten inch stroke, but uh, very useful. Little machine. Absolutely, it's um, uh, Fred Hardy has a very, a very very small milling machine over horizontal right over there in the, in the corner. That fella there, so that's quite um, uh, limited in what it can do. So I do a lot of his, and uh, and and Fred does a lot of the stuff here on his little shaper. So he set it up after I'd done the milling. He set it up. Um, to, let me see if we can come in there. Um, yeah, so Fred, Fred set it up and he's, and he's uh, cut the the two edges. Of, just show us those edges, Fred, where you've... Um, yeah, you've basically the, the gib strip's tapered, so there's a taper here. They're not, they're not the same. So I've, I've done each one separately. I've set the tool at an angle so that it actually will will come through and just adjust this it'll, it'll move into that edge so I can relieve the, the, the extra material that's that's in in the corner without actually touching the dovetail surface which we want to want to leave as is the shape is very good for this sort of stuff because you can just grind the high speed steel tool down there's more tool overhang than I would like, but I've backed it with another block of high speed steel so that we've got a sort of a, a stop. And being as I was only taking a, a sliver of material out, it worked fine. Uh, this is just almost the whole stroke on this shape, but to do this we were lucky. It's got, a, it's got about a 10 mil to spare in terms of uh, its, its stroke through. I set the tool up parallel with this, and then I, I reamed this one out and when I about faced the object 180 degrees and set it up parallel with that, and that was I was able to get into the other side. And all it really did was just take out that extra little bit right in the corner um, that the mill cutter Bruce had wouldn't, wouldn't quite reach in there. So this this was a cheap alternative to buying a new cutter. The shaper is one of the good things about the shaper is that it's you can grind these high speed steel tools to whatever you like. You can also rig up a boring bar to cut an internal keyway. And the other feature I really like about the little Douglas is it's got this little toggle arrangement which will feed 
the job forward and backwards automatically. You can either disconnect it and wind it by hand, which is what I, what I was doing here, or you can take this off and you can turn this and... That's a little detent uh, arrangement there. Yeah, drop this into the tooth on this little gear. You can yeah. set it on a, an offset here so it'll actually, as it goes around... Yeah. It's, it's, oh, well, it's Fred, we'll, we'll move on with this. We, we, yeah. I think we'll do a feature on this... Uh, on your shaper at a, at a later date. Yep. So right. let, let's go around the other side. We'll pan around the other side here. Uh, and on the bench, uh, on Fred's bench, always jealous of his place. He's got so much money real estate here. It's not funny. And um, so Fred's going to show us um, the the slide of I mean, the uh, sorry, but the tool the tool holder section there. Fred found that the bolts were pretty badly worn um, off that uh, off that unit, and so he decided to make some new ones. Fred, do you want to show us those yep. uh, uh, those bolts that you you made up? Yeah. Um, Fred's Fred's one of my um, uh, understudies as far as get around is concerned. So he went a, he went about doing a get around here. If you come and show us the, uh, right. we'll bring that. Basically. They had these. You need to show it up. Uh, see. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you, you see, see that, right? Yeah. yeah. I had these studs, and the thread on on here is is badly worn. Um, I bought some countersink cap screws that were high tensile, and bring it up there. Sorry. Showing it here. Yeah. I, I actually set this up in the lathe when it had the old piece in, and bored through this way. And, and cut a thread in the back of this this plate. Now, once I'd cut the thread through the back of the plate, it effectively broke the old bolt straight out. Where I hear it, yeah. it broke the old bolt bolt straight out, um, and allowed me to get an accurate alignment oh, on here. Yeah, yeah. Once keep an eye on the on, on the screen so you can okay, see what people yeah. see. Yeah. Sorry, Bruce. What the new to this? Yeah. yeah. Um, I countersunk the cap screw into this plate uh, about halfway, and so that I had enough room to get a bit of leave a bit of thread in the plate, and then I was able to screw the cap screw tight into the plate, silver solder the head of it from from the top so that it sealed it in, and then put this back in the lathe with the brass sleeve in my small lathe, and just face it off so that it. I've got the same shaped plate. This little plate's specially shaped to go into the um, top slide on the Dean Smith and Grace. Yeah, now the I idea is that of course this can't pull through because it's still got the countersink cap on it but being as it's silver soldered into position I should have no trouble with it breaking loose when it's yeah. being that's, um, Sorry that was a bit long-winded. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that's, a, that's fine Fred, that's fine. Uh, uh, d down here we've got um, we've got Fred's little lathe, um, which is a Hercus 260. That's from about the 1960s, isn't it, Fred? Um, the 260 is a little bit more recent than that. Bit more My recent, original yeah. Hercus uh, would have been probably 1950s, 60s. Yep. This is my new one, so this probably comes up to about the 19, I guess, the 1980s or something. It's yep. it's like the upgrade of the old Hercus. Yeah, they were made here in Australia. Mm. Fred Herkus, apparently. Yep. Good name. Yeah, good name, Fred, mm. wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Fred's got plenty of cubby holes around here, and stacks of bloody stuff in his workshop as well. Too much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll move over and have a look at the um, have a look at the cross slide, the saddle, um, and uh, we can have a look at some of these features of the saddle. Um, now that I said um, in, in previously, it, it's, it's pretty sad, um, but it's had a it's had a hell of a hard life this um, this lathe. But what we found um, is we'll just have a look and see. Yeah, what we found inside we've got the the cross slide sits on top of there with the gib, of course, to hold it. Um, we found that it was touching on a few of these uh, studs, so Fred's taken them out and machined them off and put them back in again. We're not doing anything uh, apart from uh, Fred's gone over with a little bit of um, uh, emery cloth to just clean out a few dags, 
we're not doing anything else. The, the, the thread and everything works beautifully. That's, this is the main nut and this is the, the following nut which allows you to take the backlash out. It has also shims in it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the, um, uh, put the machined uh, slide back on again. We're going to check it to see everything fits all right. Um, work out exactly how we're going to make all this work and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll shoot another movie. This cable here, by the way, um, fits a little, let's see it there, fits this little handle, uh, this little unit here, and that was part of the tracer that was on the other side. Um, and once again, this is part of, the, part of the issue we've got here, is that um, the saddle will always the, the, the cross slide will always have pressure on one direction and that will wear more than the other. And as I showed in the previous um, uh, thing, we, if Fred gets that off there quickly, we'll be able to give a close-up before we close this section. Um, the gibs in now. Just yeah, take, take the, the gib out, yeah. yeah. So, so I've, I've machined right through, as uh, Fred said, through here with uh, Miller, they've got that nice and smooth taken very very little off there's still a bit of wear shown here um, and, uh, and then that so this uh, this part here engages in that tooth in that um, in, in that key and uh, so that, that goes on like so we'll then fit that up um, we're going to check with a feeler gauge to make sure that we've, uh, we're all good. The thread down here looks extremely good and I think part of it, it may have been replaced in its earlier life, but I think the aluminium nuts here make a big difference. Um, for They're more forgiving uh, on the screw itself. So we're just going to check it now with a feeler gauge um, and uh, Maybe some more of this stuff. Oh, Fred's making all sorts of uh, faces here. So we'll be back with the next uh, next stage. This is uh, closing off on number two.